excuse me. So I'm going to go onto the DS106 website and take a look at some of these assignments, and let's do one. Actually, and make this a little easier to see. I'm going to switch this to be just the window here. So let's see how that looks. Yeah, that's good. All right, perfect. Uh, we're pro here now, aren't we? So let's take a look at some of these assignments. And take a look what we want to do. Taking a photo is not quite going to work. Crop signs. Stop frame photographer. Four icon challenge could be kind of fun. We talked about that one. I'll think about that for a minute. I might do that. An album cover. Using random information, flicker, stuff like that. That one's not bad either. <clears throat> You know what? Let's do that one. Let me click on this so I can get a good idea. So basically the visual assignment that we're going to do, and it's a little hard to see the words on the example that they give here, is um, what you do is you make a random album cover. And the way you're going to do that... Turn my headphones down here real quick. And the way you're going to do that... Uh, is by first going to a random Wikipedia article. There's a link here that you can go, and it would just spit out a random one, and that's going to be the name of your band. And then you go to a random quote on another page, and that's going to be the title, the first five words of a certain quote. And then lastly, you go to a Flickr image, and that one is going to be the album cover. Now the only problem that I have with these instructions is that they're not telling you to use Creative Commons images, but I'm going to show you how to narrow it down to that because I don't want you to use just any Flickr photo. Trust me on that. So let's do that, and then we'll try and make it all look really cool. So the first thing I need to do is get the name of our band, right? So open up a new tab and go to a random Wikipedia article, and the name of our band is, oh God, how am I even going to say that? Oh. Hold on, it's got a little pronunciation thing. Maybe they can tell us. Oh, they even play it. Kachitze. Kachitze? Kachitze. Kachitze is how that's said. Okay. Kachitse, Silesian Vavoidship, but let's just say Kachitse is the name of our band. I'm going to open up a text editor to keep track of all this. Oops. Alright, so the name of our band is Kachitse. Now the next thing we need to do is get the name of the album. We're going to get a random quote from here. Go to the bottom of the page, the last four to five words of the last quote. All right, let's see what happens. All right, so we got to go to the last quote on this page and the last four to five words, which on this one is how to acquire without meanness. So 
So that's the name of our album. And now we need our image. So we're going to go to Flickr. Now this says exploring interestingness, interesting last seven days. We can go there, but I'm going to show you how to narrow it down to just be Creative Commons images. Um, if I can. All right, so usually there's a search. Oh dear. Let's see, here I am acting like I know what I'm talking about. Um, I'll show you. For example, like if I was to search for a picture of a banana. You can do that search, but all these pictures that show up on Flickr, those belong to those people. And more often than not, uh, they have not licensed them out for you to just use. And it's really poor form to just take an image off the web and just use it without any attribution or even... Even without attribution, you know, even if you were to say this was this person's photo, if they didn't want you to use it, you shouldn't. Uh, but there's a way that some people license it. If you go to the advanced search here and scroll down, they have what's called a Creative Commons license. So you can say, only show me ones that are licensed for me to use. And usually what it means is that you can show them on your blog or you can use them in an assignment. In this case, we're going to be modifying it a bit by putting text over top. So I'm going to check off Find Content to Modify, Adapt, or Build Upon. So then when I search for banana with those things checked, then I can find images that I'm allowed to use but also adapt, which works pretty well, too. You can see there's still a lot of images, uh, but they're very different ones. Now the question, though, and someone tell me on Twitter if you know how... Um, but the question is, is there a way to show, to explore images that are Creative Commons licensed? Because that's what the assignment wants us to do. They want, they want us to take something from this page. My guess is it's not going to be Creative Commons licensed. It says select the third image here which if I go here, and I'll show you where to look. Yeah, right here on the right is where they tell you what the license is, and this one's copyrighted, all rights reserved. So it's not one that you would want to use. Yeah, and um, the advanced search does work, except the, um, the assignment wants you to take a random photo. So if I'm searching for something, it's not quite that random. I would be narrowing it down. Why not use Bulker instead? Bulker might work. Let me see if I still have that on here. I don't. Leo's about, does Bulker allow you to, does it just let you, sh do you have to search for something or will it just show you interesting images? And maybe I'm just completely overthinking this at this point. I guess I could reload and keep clicking on the third image till I find one. Hey, this might work actually. This has a Creative Commons license. You are free to share and to remix. So that'll work. But just so we know, I'm going to keep that open, but I want to try the suggestion of searching, but not searching for anything. So if I find Creative Commons images that I can adapt, and do a random search. Comes up with stuff. I guess you could sort by interesting and then take the third image from that. That could work. What do you think? Look for the categories. So that one would work too. This one seems to work fine. Um, but anyway, the key thing that you should take away from this is when you're using images for your assignments, it is good form to try and find one that has a Creative Commons license that allows you to do that. Um, I don't want people just using anybody's images and then ending up getting lawsuits. 
So anyway, we can use this image. They've licensed it out for use. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to view all sizes here. And the largest size is 800 by 526. That'll work fine. And I'll just save this one to my desktop. So now we have our image. We have the band name. And I've already forgotten how that's pronounced. Kachitse. And How to Acquire Without Meanness is the name of the album. So let's put it all together and actually create something here. We're going to make our album cover. Um, and I'm going to use a program called Aviary. I call it a program. It's pronounced Trout Bang. <laughs> Do your own assignment, Lee, Lee Elzebub. Come on. This is my album. All right. So Aviary. Let's talk about that for a minute. I call it a program, but it's not something that you actually have to install. Uh, if you go to aviary.com and scroll down, they have what's called the Phoenix Image Editor. And I'm going to launch this so you can see it's a web-based uh, editor. And it's actually pretty slick. It's got a lot of the same types of features that Photoshop does. Uh, but it's all running in a browser. I didn't have to install anything. So to start with an image, you can load one from an image file, which we're going to do because I have it on my desktop. Or you can start from scratch, just a you know white picture. I'm going to load file, upload... And let's go to my desktop and grab our album. It's going to upload this in here. And there we go. Now since this is an album, I would assume the first thing to do would be to crop it to be a square. Yeah? So let's do that. I'm going to take my selection tool. And I'm going to draw a square on here. Now I don't know if there's a way. To constrain it to a square. On Photoshop you can hold down shift. And then when you're drawing a square it will actually lock it in. It doesn't actually do that on aviary, but I'm going to play around a bit. We can get pretty close anyway. Let's do this. And I want that tree in my image too. So let's... I'm going to eyeball that. So that looks pretty square to me. And I'm going to go up here after I've selected and go to image, crop selection. So now we have the image. I open up my text tool and let's go back here and get my band name. Copy that in and paste it here. Now here's the first thing that's a problem that most people tend to not notice when they're doing images is that color of text is really important when you're putting text over top of an image. Right now black over blue is not very easy to read. Uh, so you kind of want to play around with this. Sometimes black is going to work really well on very light backgrounds. Uh, other times it's not. Oops. So I'll show you an example of that. If I put the text right down there, and actually I can make it a little bit bigger, it's, it's easier to read there because because that background there is very light. But if I set it right there, it immediately becomes very difficult to read. So you kind of want to play around with this and the colors that you use. First thing I'm going to do is just resize this to be the size that I want. And then I'm going to choose a typeface. Now this is something um, I, be, I don't know, is this actually pulling the fonts that I have on my computer? I think it might be. 
which is actually cool. I was going to say that you're limited on the typefaces you can use with Aviary, but I think it's pulling from the ones on my computer, which is cool because I have some fun ones on there. That one's not bad. Sort of a typewriter type thing. Let's do the 28 Days Later font. I like it. I like distressed fonts. <laughs> Alright, from here on out, Kachitse will be referred to as Troutfang. I give up. Unbelievable. You people are insane. Um, so then we're going to choose a color here. And you can play around with that. Obviously, white's going to go really go good against the blue background. Um, but you can select anything. Uh, another nice thing to do is to actually choose colors. From the image itself, but that's not very visual. About a grayish color. Let's stick to white for now. We can play around with it more. We're not going to make it boring. And then they're going to convert it to bitmap, and you can move it around. That's good. So now we got our band name. Apply the changes. And now our album title. How to acquire without meanness. Let's put this in here. Paste that in. Select it. Obviously, this needs to get smaller. And I'm probably not going to use the same font, but I do want to. I'm going to do that. Check that out. I like the effect of that. Um, I'm going to align it to the right. And I'm going to change the font here. Oh, I don't know. I like something big and boxy. That's a good thick font. It's not that good. Impact isn't bad. Don't tell anyone I said that, but impact's alright. Let's go. Yeah, not it. As you scroll over these, they will actually show you what it looks like in the example text there. So that's a helpful tip as well. Cracked is kind of fun. And why not? Let's go with that. Let's boost it up a little bit more. I need to move this over so I can see. And the other thing I'm going to do is the line spacing here, I'm going to reduce it so that these letters are really close together. That's not bad. Um, color wise, uh, what do we want to do? We could stick with white. I'll tell you what, we'll stay with white. I'm going to keep consistent here without trying to make it too boring. Alright, so we got our title. And you can see when you're adding all this text in here, it's actually adding it all onto separate layers. So we can adjust all of those as well. Um, Aviary's got a few blend modes that you can use. Uh, if you were adding something over top and you wanted to play around with some of these, I'll show you what that looks like. <laughs> yeah, so you can see how the text is affected by where it sits. And that's a 
It's kind of cool, but not quite what I'm going for. You can play around with some of these. With white text, it's not going to be too interesting. Let's just stay normal there. Now, Aviary's got some other tools, too. Um, if you've ever used Photoshop, you're used to um, having filters and things, and there's a few filters up here. Uh, but if you wanted to play around with more stuff, you can actually push a layer into what they call Peacock, which is another program that will let you adjust some things on there. So I'm going to put this back down here. Let's take a look at what this looks. Push layer to Peacock. And it's got to convert it. So this is going to open up a separate program, but we're still working with our image here. And keep in mind, this is all running on the web. I haven't had to install a single thing on this computer, which is great. I'll give it a moment to pull in the layer here, and we can play with some of the effects that it has. Don't prove me wrong. This is good TV. What do y'all think? No, this isn't bad. Oh, this isn't doing anything, though. What the heck? Maybe I lied to you. Peacock is a lie. It doesn't do anything. Uh, Alright, let's close that out. Clearly, we're not getting anywhere with that. Ah, that's why. An image asking if I want to allow it to do that. Let's try this again. Oops. Push layer to peacock. It should work now. There we go. So this is pretty crazy. This is what peacock is. It is um, a way for you to add effects to certain layers. Strange dog. Let's, um, oh, shoot. Let's flip back over to Peacock. Sorry, I'm reading the Twitter at the same time. So there's a couple different uh, things that you can do, some effects here. For example, the bevel effect. And what happens, if I can zoom out here, you've got your canvas and your resource. And I think if I remember how this works correctly, you drag this out here. And then you stick the effect between these two boxes. And what happens is that applies that effect to it. And then you can adjust all the properties here. So... Let's say I want to do an outer bevel, um, strength is just ever so slight, high quality, highlight color is white, that'll probably work. Let's say close and preserve changes and take a look at what that looks like. Did it even do anything? Son of a gun. Let's try that again. I don't plan these things, so what are you going to do, right? Bevel. Put it between the two. randomize the effects. Let me set them to default. Let's see. Uh, let's see if it did. Alright. Let's cancel that. Close and preserve changes. Uh, 
it's sticking in there. Probably have an account. Have to have an account to save that. But anyway, those are some various effects you can play with. I'm just goofing off here. So, I think one other thing that I want to do here. Yeah, I know what I'll do. I'm going to add another layer here. This layer is going to go beneath of this text right here. And what I want to do is add some color behind it, just to help offset that text a little bit. And I think the way I'll do that is adding some rectangular shapes that are like black. Let's do that like this. So that helps set that off a little bit. It's a little bit boring. The way I'm going to fix that is to grab my eraser tool here. Take sort of this distorted effect and you can adjust the size here a little bit larger. So I'm just going to road away at this just a little bit. Now, of course, I'm very comfortable in Photoshop, so this is very much out of the norm for me. But we can make do here. Let's see. Oh, this one's pretty nice. So I'm just taking that eraser tool and just really corroding at the edge here just trying to give it this look of like a brushed not really a brushed paint but just like you know like if you slap some paint on it and then you took a a piece of duct tape and just ripped it away that's kinda how I feel like that would go so that's kinda nice Let's cut into this just a tad more. Cool. So we have our album cover. Completely random. Now we need to export this. We go to File, Export Image. as a PNG file and then generate the image. It'll prepare it. do and then the download button click on that save it to the desktop it'll download our image all right you can close that out now and we can see our image there So that is just one visual assignment that you can do. Random album cover art, our Trout Fang album. So I'll probably post that to my blog along with this video to help out people who want to do something like this. That's just one of several assignments that you can play around with. Um, I don't know. What else do you all want to do? Does someone want to Skype me in? I could open up the Skype. Now I'm not sure. Yeah, I can probably do the audio too. We could have Skype conversation. No, uh, hold on one second. Uh, it looks like Timmy Boy has to be a father. And take care of my child. So I don't think we'll do any Skype conversations here. I've got to go help her out. But anyway, I'm going to post this on my blog. I'm going to post the video as well so people can do it and otherwise 
anybody else can jump into this DS106 TV thing. I should mention that. Um, if you're interested in broadcasting, it doesn't take a lot to do it. Um, a program that I'm using is rather expensive, but I have it on my desktop, and it's called Wirecast. But you don't have to do that. Um, if you just want to broadcast on DS106 TV, there's a whole page about it. When you go to DS106 TV, up on the top left menu, and click on how to broadcast and that will explain all the information that you need um, you do need to have a user ID and password and if you want to do that just uh, reply to me on Twitter or direct message me and I can give you that information I don't put it on the website for fear that I guess people would <laughs> hijack us <laughs> I don't know um, but I'm more than willing to give it to anybody who wants to broadcast but anyway that explains a little bit of how the DS-106 TV thing works and a few ways that you can get started. And I encourage people to do stuff like that. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to jump off of here. Enjoy the rest of y'all's day, and I will as well. Thanks.